Hi, this is Stan Lau with Master Math. During today's lesson, you're going to come across some You Try It pages. When you get there, hit your pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Inequalities, that's just such a confusing idea. Well, actually, if you work on it a little bit, it'll all sort out, settle down, and you won't find it that hard to understand. You know what inequality means. You use that word all the time. You know that your height doesn't equal your father's height. Well, math is just trying to model the real world, and it needs symbols for what you say. For instance, that symbol right there means does not equal. 15 does not equal 16. You know that. And math just needs a symbol. Does not equal. So it can say 15 does not equal 16. This symbol means is larger than. 16 is larger than 15. Now you'll notice that the bigger end of the is larger than symbol is towards the bigger number. And the smaller end the little point there is towards the smaller number. That'll help you remember how that symbol can be used. This symbol is just like is larger than, but it has half an equal sign under it, and it means is larger than or equal to. Here's an example. X is larger than or equal to 15. This symbol means is smaller than. And again, the smaller end of the symbol is towards a smaller number. And the larger end or the open end is towards the larger number. So if you looked at this, you'd say, all right, that's my larger end. 16 is the larger number. And this symbol, again, is just the uh, is smaller than symbol with a half an equal sign under it and it means is smaller than or equal to. 15 is smaller than or equal to x. We can put inequalities on a number line or we can graph them. Let's look at the number line first. I've got an expression x is greater than or equal to 2. And here's a number line. Well, right there that green dot is 2. And what this green line is saying is that everything to the right of 2 is larger than 2. 3 is larger than 2. 4 is larger than 2. And so forth. And what it's, at, what it's telling us is that x falls somewhere in that green line. We can also put uh, inequalities on a coordinate plane. If we had the inequality x is smaller than or equal to 2, there's where the 2 is on the number line, and there's where the 2 is on the coordinate plane. And all these numbers that are in purple here, all these points on the coordinate plane in purple here, would have an x that was less than or equal to 2. x is greater than or equal to 2. Well, there's 2 again. And all this in the colored area over here has x's that are greater or equal to 2. Well, how would we solve an inequality? Well, it's pretty much the same as solving an equation, and it follows pretty much the same rules with one big exception, which we're going to talk about now. So the rules for solving an inequality include, number one, make the same changes to both sides of the inequality. If you multiply one side of the inequality by minus 2, you need to multiply the other side of the inequality by minus 2, or it'll be a different inequality. Number 2, isolate the variable. Try to get everything on the other side of the inequality so you leave only the variable on one side of the inequality. Number 3, combine like terms. If you've got 2x plus 3x, combine it to 5x. And number four, use the inverse operation or the opposite to remove clutter away from the variable. 
you remember that in an, in an equation, if we had 3x equals 5, then we'd try to get rid of that 3 times x by dividing by um, 3. And that's exactly what you do in an inequality, except for this slight change. But if your inverse operation is multiplication or division by a negative number, then the inequality sign reverses. If I've got a smaller than sign and then I multiply or divide by a negative number, I gotta flip that sign around and make it a larger than sign. If I multiply or divide by a negative number and I've got a uh, larger than sign, after I multiply or divide by the negative number, I gotta change that to a smaller than sign. That's true of the smaller than or equal sign and also the larger than or equal sign. They both have to be flipped or reversed. Let's look at some examples and you'll see this is obviously true. I've got 3 is greater than 1. You know 3 is greater than 1. But if I multiply both sides of that inequality by minus 2, I get minus 6 on the left and I get minus 2 on the right. And minus 6 is a smaller number than minus 2. Minus 6 is further to the left on a number line, so it's a smaller number than minus 2. So I had to turn around my inequality sign and change it from 3 is larger than 1 to 3 times minus 2 is smaller than 1 times minus 2. Or, let's say I had 1 is smaller than 4 and I wanted to divide both sides by minus 2. If I divide both sides by minus 2, then I've got to turn around my inequality sign. And you'll see this is exactly true. If I divide 1 by minus 2, I've got minus a half. And if I divide 4 by minus 2, I've got minus 2. And minus a half is larger than minus 2. It works when we've got a variable in there too. If I've got x is larger than 1 and I multiply both sides by minus 2, then I've got to turn my inequality sign around and make it read is smaller than because minus 2x is smaller than minus 2. Try this one. Solve for x. 3x is greater than 15. Hit your pause button, solve the problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to the answer. Three x is larger than fifteen. Well, I know that the rule says if I want to get rid of a three times x, I've got to divide both sides by three. And that's true if you're solving an equation or if you're solving an inequality. I've got to divide the three x by three to get rid of that three. And if I'm going to divide the left side by three, I have to divide the right side by 3, so that becomes 15 over 3. And my equality sign, inequality sign, comes down unchanged because I wasn't multiplying or dividing by a negative number. Now, I've got 3x over 3, the 3's cancel each other out and leave just x, and 15 divided by 3 is 5. Minus one-third y is smaller than 10. Well, the first thing I got to do, and the first thing I want to do, is to try to find a way to make that look a little simpler. It looks simpler to me if I write it this way. I've got y over minus 3, and that's the same, uh, that means exactly the same thing as minus one-third y. Now, I know I got to get rid of that divided by minus 3. So to get rid of a divided by minus 3, I multiply by minus 3, which I've done right there. So now I've got minus 3 times y over minus 3. 
And if I multiply the left side of the equation by minus 3, i got to multiply the right side of the equation by minus 3. But you remember, if I multiply or divide by a negative number, i got to turn my inequality sign around. I've got to change that is smaller than to an is larger than. So now I've got minus 3 over y, excuse me, minus 3 times y over minus 3 is larger than 10 times minus 3. The left side of the equation, my minus 3's cancel each other out and leave just a y. On the right side of the equation, 10 times minus 3 equals minus 30. So, the solution for minus one-third y is smaller than 10 is y is greater than minus 30. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Okay, we've got minus 2z is greater than 5. Well, I know i got to get rid of that minus 2 in front of the z in order to isolate the z. So, the way you get rid of a minus 2 times is to divide by minus 2, which I've done right there. If I'm going to divide the left side of the equation by minus 2, then i got to divide the right side of the equation by minus 2. But remember, if I multiply or divide by a negative number, then I got to turn my inequality sign around. So that la is larger than changes to is smaller than. Now it's just a simple solution. Minus 2 over minus 2 leaves just z. And 5 divided by minus 2 is minus 2 and a half. Don't forget to do three things as you try this problem. First, circle the numbers and underline the question. And second, hit your pause button, solve the problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to the answer. Okay, I see you CC'd this for you, and I've also added an S in here. And that S is the variable. It's what we're going to try to solve for. In this problem, it says what we're trying to solve for is the average amount you need to save each of the next three weeks. So S is the average per week, and there's three weeks. So if I multiply three weeks times the average per each week, I'll have the amount of money I need to save. And that's three times S. Now three times S has to be at least the amount of money I need. It could be more, but it has to be at least the amount of money I need to uh, add to the $75 to have the $125. So I need a symbol to say that, and that symbol would be is larger than or equal to. Then I need to figure out what goes on the right side of the equation, which is how much money I, uh, I need in addition to what I've already got. I've got $75, but the rod cost $125, so I need $125 minus $75, or $50 more. 3S is larger than or equals $50. Now i got to solve. I get rid of the 3 by dividing both sides of the equation by 3. The left side becomes just S. The right side is $16.67. Well, that's our lesson on solving inequalities. I hope you enjoyed it. Now it's time to test your skills. Go to www.mastermath.info and on the worksheets page, download and print the solving inequalities worksheet. You can also go to the interactive uh, quiz page on mastermath.info and try your skills there. Come back and see us again real soon.